Hello, everyone. Welcome to Screen Scream on Viola. Right now, it's the Golden Horse Film Festival in Taiwan. So today, we will talk about two movies selected for the festival: one Japanese animation and one hot topic in the theater right now. Without further ado, let's listen to the introduction of the first new movie we're going to talk about today: Drifting. Just out of jail. Fai finds a spot on a street corner where other homeless people welcome him, but he doesn't get much time to settle in. The police soon chase them away, and their possessions disappear into a garbage truck. Young social worker Miss Ko thinks it's time to fight this in court. In the meantime, Fai and his friends have other concerns. The first new movie we're going to talk about today is a Hong Kong movie called Drifting. I was very confused by the name of the main character, cause in the introduction it said Fai, but I was like, what? And I realized, oh, it's Cantonese. So yes, the story is about Fai and his homeless friends who lose their place and they bump into a young homeless. Fai's son's already dead. So he treats this young homeless as his son. He invites him to join them, and they build cottages together. But can they really survive the winter before the justice and compensation comes to them? The reason why this movie is called Drifting is because it's really difficult to explain it all, and all the characters in this movie are poor people. It doesn't mean that they don't have money, but maybe, or they don't have a place to stay, or they don't have a family to go back, things like that. And their life is like drifting in the water, drifting in the city with skyscrapers. The most interesting part of this movie is that it's based on true story, and it's the second feature film of director Li Junshuo. So it seems like he's pretty good at depicting true life, especially those at the bottom of the society. So as we heard in the introduction, Fai just gets out of the jail and becomes a homeless again. But at that same night, the government workers suddenly come to their place and clean, and just take everything the homeless have without even noticing them. Right after that, Fai actually fights with the police, but. He doesn't help. He just can't get his possessions back.、And、that's when the social worker Miss He comes in. She wants to help them, and everyone decides to go to court with the government, asks for compensation, and asks the government to apologize to them. But you know where they live, like under the sky bridge. It's a very dangerous place. Even when the lawsuit between the homeless and the government. Seems to be very optimistic. Something comes to them once again, and that is for us to find out at the theater. So, if you like true stories in Hong Kong, and you want to know how the life of the homeless in Hong Kong is like, you can go watch Drifting. After hearing such serious topic, it's time for some comedy. Let's listen to the second new movie we're going to talk about today. Girls und Panzer das Finale Part Three, the third film in the six-part Girls and Panzer Sashu Usho film series. Girls and Panzer 最終章第三話が 4D で上映決定です。座席が動く 4D ですから、戦車の振動のみならず。Wait, that's it? The introduction was so short, but you know, Girls and Panzer. The finale, part three, is really an amazing movie. Not that I've seen it, but at least from the introduction, we know that it's the third one of the six in total. I just heard this from a friend who's a fan of Girls and Panzer. He said that the most amazing part of Girls and Panzer is that they put two contradict concept together. They put Girls and Panzer in the film as a comedy. It's about this girls' club at school who fight on the Panzer, but they're very serious, and the details about military are excellent. In this episode, not only the school of the protagonists are worth watching, actually other schools' competition 
are brilliant as well. And it's impossible to predict who will win in this episode because each competition is very amazing. Something different this time is that before, when Girls and Panzer was released, they would release it in 2D digital version first. And then maybe a year after that, they will release the 4D version. But this time, 4D version is released right away. And the Japanese officials announced that before they used to combine two parts together and then produce a 4D version. But since part 3, they're going to release each part with 4D version. I guess it's a good news for fans. But at the same time, I also think that it's a way of earning more money because you know there are only 48 minutes with this one. So with shorter content, but they can make the same money. That really is a good deal, isn't it? But at least fans don't have to wait for a certain time before 40 version is released. So if you are a fan of Girls and Panzer, this is a very good chance to watch 2D digital version and 4D version at the same time. Because I'm pretty sure most fans watch it more than twice at least anyway. And you're able to enjoy the exciting jungle fights with the 4D effects. Now before we move on to Top 007, let's review what we had from last week. There were two Top 3s, Dune and My Hero Academia World Heroes Mission. Top 2 was Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and Top 1, No Time to Die. There is a big change this year. Wait for it. Top 4, The Falls. Wait, what? There's only one movie from Top 7 to Top 4? Okay, that means it's super crowded from Top 3 to Top 1. But anyway, that's something we need to worry about later. So of course, we're going to talk about the falls. And it's very interesting because a few weeks ago, there was an article released in Taiwan that got a lot of attention over the internet. Because the critic review criticized the falls a lot. The point is that the critic did not only criticize the movie, but also personally attacked the director. So the platform and the editors had to make sure that there's nothing he wrote or nothing they kept at least would cause a lawsuit. Let's start from the director's previous film first, A Son. It's on Netflix, so if you're interested, you can go watch it. I watched it and actually I like it pretty much. In that controversial article, the author did write about how lousy it is to use puns in movie titles. But I do like how a son and a son, you know, um, you are his father and the sun in the sky, are similes. I think that was pretty brilliant. But how about the falls? I think it's not that obvious. And actually, when I saw the trailer of The Falls, I found it interesting. I was intrigued by the tension between the mother and the daughter. But the problem was that after you watched the trailer, you didn't know what exactly it's going to talk about. And that doesn't trigger me to watch it at all. So I think that's the problem of this film. And my friends keep telling me that if I'm not interested after watching the trailer, then I better not go at all because I will be disappointed. So here's a suggestion for you. If you want to watch The Falls, you can go watch the trailer first. And if you still want to watch it, then go ahead. And remember what you think with me afterwards. Now I can't wait to hear the super crowded top 3 to top 1. Top 3. No time to die. Where's 007? Treat or trick. Top two. Dun. Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always, you know that. Sword Art Online. Progressive. Venom. Let there be carnage. Good evening, Eddie. Hey, Mrs. Chen. Good evening. Top one. Eternals. How long do we have? Seven days. Wow, it really is crowded. 
and I have more than one movie that I want to talk about because I saw Trick or Treat last weekend, and I saw Sword Art Online Progressive, and I'm personally a fan. But at the same time, we haven't talked about Eternals deeply, and I haven't shared why I don't like it. And it's top one this week. So let's talk about Eternals. Something about the Eternals you need to know before you go watch it is that it's actually a very hardcore, or you can say niche, superhero team. Because even fans who are familiar with Marvel probably don't know who they are. Not to mention those moviegoers who only watch MCU adaptations. Take me, a Marvel fan myself. When I watched the Eternals. I didn't even recognize anyone in the two post-credit scenes. But after I looked it up on the internet, I realized that I actually know the character from the second post-credit scene. But you get how hardcore and niche these characters are. And because the background of the first three phases of MCU are set in modern society, if Marvel wants to Broaden and deepen MCU. We need to talk about history, and that's what they do with the Eternals.、And、it's not about MCU history. They're talking about human history and how the Eternals are involved in it. Very interesting. The crew wanted to make an intense, fast-paced, focusing on now, but at the same time, a work with history. So you can look at it as a seven thousand year road trip movie, but it's also the reason why I don't like it. I mean, I personally don't like history, and if you show me a new team of heroes, I'd like to know more about each of them. But the Eternals focuses on the story, the big picture, instead of each character. Because if you look at the Guardians of the Galaxy, there are At least five or six main characters, but you still get to know each of them, their characteristics. But in the Eternals, you feel like you don't know each of them very much, and the movie ends. I totally agree that I think they did a pretty good job constructing all different characters so that the audience wouldn't be confused. Also, the scores and the shots are beautifully integrated. But at the same time, I'd love to know more about the characters. So I think if you are a person who, like me, who like to get to know characters when you watch movies, then maybe the Eternals isn't your cup of tea. But if you do like Marvel, like me, I still went to see it. I enjoyed the experience. I just don't like the movie itself. So you can take your pick. And that's all the time we have for today. Remember to tune in same time here at Screen Scream next week. I'm Viola. See you next week.